All right, we are back working on the 1970 HydroTrack 12 that has the brand new uh, frame, like I was mentioning before, and the uh, different transmission. So uh, basically, uh, since last time you saw it, I got the front tires put on. So I'm gonna lower it down on the forklift because it's on a jack in the back and the front tires are sitting on there. I wanna get it lowered to the ground first because I have to, uh, depending on how level it's gonna sit, I have to either put washers or spacers on the bottom of the spindle, between the spindle and the axle, or on the top because these spindles aren't originally from this axle. So I'm going to set this down. That's just the wood falling. I had, uh, of course this is stuck on that tire, so. There we go. All right, well that's cool. So it's on the front tires. So I'm gonna get the back tires put on and get it kind of balanced out here a little bit better and I will come back. All right, so I got a lot more stuff done on it. So I'm kind of impressed that everything so far seems to be working out. So I got the front tires actually put on. Uh, the steering works. Um, I got a lot of painting of stuff to do. As you see, it's all uh, rusty stuff. Um, so I have to paint that, uh, take it back off and paint it, which isn't too big of a deal. Um, the steering is a lot faster than a normal one of these. So you can see I'm not moving this very far and it's spinning quite fast. Go to the wider view there. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's some pretty fast steering so doesn't steer very far that way for some reason so hopefully it'll be fine otherwise I'll have to adjust something on it but we'll go with that being fine um oh I guess it hits right there um so that's not too big of a deal I got the belt put on and I just went upstairs in my pile of belts I have and I grabbed one and it happened to be the right size which that normally never happens um, so this pulley here I put in the factory location on the on these hydros for some reason they're not down here where they normally are they're up here further I don't know why um, got this uh, belt tensioner put on which is a uh, off of a normal like SS 12 um, I've been making new belt tensioners which uh, this is a piece I cut out with the plasma cutter um, these work better when you repower a tractor because I have a bracket that goes across the top here and then this pivots on that instead of what I do here. So I put these on the hydros because basically all it does is make it easier to pull start. And then from there you really don't use it other than as like an emergency brake or something because it'll stop the hydro from spinning. I did have to cut some of the frame out right there, which was interesting. So that pulley will work. Um, so I did that. I put two springs on there because two is better than one to make sure it's tight. Don't know why I used the eye bolt there because I was thinking the spring was going to go to there and turns out it doesn't. Um, so yeah, uh, I got a couple more things here left to do and then uh, it'll be actually ready to drive. I got gas and oil to put in it. Um, I have some hubs upstairs that on how I was showing you in the before. Um, that these hubs are homemade and they're pointed on the ends. I got some factory hubs that pull off the transmission. I can swap them out and then I can put the tires on the other way. Uh, the steering, uh, basically, um, if you guys either have or have seen uh, like a 66, uh, like Sears Suburban 10 or 12, uh, the tie rod basically comes from under there up to this piece here. Um, it doesn't have the triangle piece underneath. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I'll get some more stuff done and uh, I'll come back and show you the progress. All right, so I got a good amount of stuff done. I got the hood and grill put on. Uh, as you see, this hood uh, is not a factory hood either. Uh, we made it. Um, these are factory inserts, so they were just taken out of a junk hood that was uh, rusted through and welded them in here. Um, as you see there, has the hood latches. It latches on the dash nice perfectly which is pretty cool um, I got the uh, exhaust deflector on here which basically just keeps it from blowing black 
and uh, nasty stuff into the grill and ruining the paint. And instead it just comes out off the side over here. I got the throttle hooked up. So I came up with this because I'm totally out of uh, normal throttles for these. So I put two little tiny holes in the dash um, underneath of where the normal throttle would be if you were to put a factory one on here. Um, so it seems to work fine. I had to get inventive again because this engine um, had a solid state throttle. Um, so basically I took the spring and the throttle cable and I kind of circled them together like that. And I just used the throttle clamp and went just over there. Um, I'll be able to run this. All I got to do is put oil in it and gas in it and uh, see what happens. Um, there's no seat or seat spring yet. Um, I just painted the seat spring actually uh, in white. So I'll have to wait for that to dry. Um, I got my other hubs put on. So now the tires are on there the right way. Um, which on these is the right way is actually backwards because... Uh, the rear ends on these are wider than the stick shifts. Um, and these are the hubs that, on like the 68 Super 12s and stuff, they're the sliding hubs. I just put a bunch of spacers in there uh, to keep them from sliding. And then these have like a snap, snap ring clip there to uh, keep it from falling off. I'll just tell you, here goes flat literally within about five minutes. So anyway, I'm going to put some gas oil in this, uh, start it up, inflate that tire. And I'm going to sit on like nothing and uh, use that vice grip there as a steering wheel and uh, go for a ride. All right, so I made a bunch of progress on stuff. So the last time I had the camera on, I was on the, the blue hydro. Um, since this is a video about five restorations uh, slash builds and whatever, uh, this is uh, the uh, Roper hydro that I was working on. The power steering didn't work out because apparently I didn't have enough gallons per minute pump. So I welded in this steering setup that's in here and it doesn't work out either. So I'm going to cut that back out and uh, figure out something else. Steering for this thing is not working out so far. So other than that, it does run and drive uh, very nice actually, um, aside from the steering. Foot control hydro works. Um, the seat is just on there temporarily. Um, it's going to get one that uh, folds up so you can get access to the uh, gas tank. That's the hydraulic reservoir that's under the seat. Um, for those of you who haven't saw that video, this is a custom hydro. So it has dual hydraulic motors that power the wheels. And then a hy hydro pump that's right there. Um, built drive just like it's supposed to be. At some point in time, I am going to do a shaft drive. Um, I'll show you the parts that I got for that in a minute here. I have this engine that'll either go in this project or another tractor that I'm going to be buying within a week. Um, it's an 18 horse Vanguard V twin. Uh, check out my auction finds video that I have uh, did last week. Um, that's where that came from. Came from a golf course mower. Uh, that one actually runs really good, so that's going to find its way either into this or something else. Um, comes with this hour gauge too with uh, 1460 hours on it. Um, so the blue hydro um, is over here. It's done-ish for now. Just went and got my light because my new camera I have doesn't have a light on it like the old one did. Um, so this is the shape that it's in now. I can't even remember last time I had the camera on what it was like, but this is what it is now. It runs and drives. The seat's on it. Uh, it just needs a uh, steering wheel emblem. Uh, decals all over, uh, tread on the floorboards, uh, hood painted, and rims painted, and then that's done. I got the tire fixed by putting a tube in it, uh, which I believe was that side. Uh, that's fixed now. Um, I put the inserts, or the mesh in the front grille, painted the, around the headlights. Uh, one of them wood grille corners is on it. Uh, now that tire in the front there goes flat, so I'll have to fix that. Um, so what that engine came from that I showed you a minute ago is, uh, this contraption that's out here. So this is something that I was thinking, um, don't exactly know how it's going to work out, but I ha have this hydraulic pump here. Uh, this is a golf course, uh, mower, but, um, this is where the engine came from. Anyway, uh, there's this hydraulic pump that has five different outputs on it. So one for the drive motors. 
one for power steering and then one for auxiliary and then two more auxiliary basically because the three are for the reels but you could have them for auxiliary uh, to run stuff on a Sears tractor. I also have these hydraulic motors here that were to power the reels. So I can use them to some, for something. So this has this uh, power steering cylinder there. And then the actual power steering uh, unit itself is up here. And then uh, individual drive motors right in the right in the wheels there. So I would have to figure out a different valve for forward and back because this one is incorporated in this huge mess here, which would never fit on a Sears frame. So I would be pulling uh, the motor unit or the pump unit out of this and then the motors out of this. Um, some hydraulic lines and this power steering stuff. And then that would get somehow in a Sears tractor and that would be pretty cool, I think. And somehow this hydraulic reservoir here would also have to be incorporated in that somehow. Uh, but yeah, um, more coming soon because my grave my graveyard slash bowling yard here is looking very empty and there's just that one tractor over there here uh i hinted a little bit earlier on in the video what's gonna be happening here uh but there's gonna be something cool happening and uh yeah it's not gonna be empty for long